to start to worship him in a moment. Thanks, Emily. We have come and gathered here today to worship our Lord and Saviour and our King. And for some of us, we have come for a very specific reason. We have come to witness and to celebrate the baptism and the welcome of two very special people. As we welcome them into the family of Christ publicly and as they witness to us their faith and their journey. So let us stand together and let us praise our Lord as we come and we celebrate this morning.
right when I feel your favor flood my life. Even in the good, I'll follow you. Even in the good, I'll follow you. When the boat is tossed upon the waves, when I wonder if you'll keep me safe, even in the storms, I'll follow you. Even in the storms, I'll follow you. I believe everything that you say you are. I believe that I see your unchanging heart in the good things, in the hardest part. I believe and I will follow you. I believe and
Savior, Lord God, who loves us so much more than we could ever try to comprehend, Lord God. Lord, we come and we kneel at the foot of the cross this morning. We pray that the Holy Spirit would come and would place upon our hearts those areas of our lives that you want us to pray for, that you want us to open up to you, Lord God that you want us to confess to you, Lord God, for you are forgiving and you want nothing more than for us to acknowledge our sins, acknowledge our humanity, Lord God. Acknowledge that we cannot be perfect and to ask for forgiveness, Lord God, and you will give that with open arms. You stand here today just waiting. Lord God, as we Come and we listen to the witness 
that two very special people will bring today, Lord God, as they publicly announce their faith, publicly announce that they will follow you, Lord God, for the rest of their lives. Jesus, may their words impact us. May we hear their stories, hear the way that you have changed their lives and impacted their lives, Lord God. And may we be moved, may we be challenged, may we be changed, Lord God, so that we may draw closer to you. Bless each person, each heart here today, Lord God. Lord, we pray in your most glorious name. In Jesus' name, amen. Please take a seat. Good morning, everyone. Lovely to see all of you here today. Um, It's such a privilege and honor uh, for me to stand out here. By the way, my name is Joe. I'm the youth pastor for um, this church. And and we've got a couple of stories to share with you today. Um, I usually love to share stories, but it's not about me today. It's about the stories of um, Luke and Pumi, um, who've made up their mind to be baptized um, today. Just a couple of things before we go into, uh, before we, they get baptized. I just want to share with you why do we actually baptize? Firstly, we baptize because Jesus modeled it for us. You may remember in the Bible that Jesus, before his ministry began, he actually went to John deliberately and became baptized in the River Jordan. This is a powerful modeling for us. And if it's good enough for Jesus to be baptized, hey, I say it's good enough for us to be baptized as well. We want to follow Jesus in what he did. When he did get baptized, we see in Matthew 3.16 that that, um, the Holy Spirit came down like a dove and alighted him. And he said, "This this is my son. Listen to him. This is the powerful symbolism and this is the powerful story of baptism. Number two, not only is it modeled by Jesus, it is also a commandment of Jesus. In Matthew 28, Jesus' last words on earth before the ascension, before he went up into heaven, he said, go and make disciples of all nations. And then he says, baptize, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is a commandment of God that we make disciples. As Christians, we make disciples and we baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are here to obey and submit to the word of Jesus. And this is what Jesus wants us to do. Finally, we baptize because it is our profession of faith. We have decided to follow Jesus. And yes, it might be a private thing to to declare our faith to God. It's a personal thing, yes, but it's not private. We choose to profess our faith in front of our friends, our family, and the people that we love. Do you know that when we actually decide to get baptized, when we submit to the Word of God, we're we're, we're telling four four people, well, well, four people, There's four ways. One, you're telling yourself. It's a private profession of my faith. Number two, it's also a profession to God. It's a personal profession to God that I I love you and I want to show my love to you in a public way. Three, we're also sharing it with others, our church community. And four, you're making a declaration to the devil that I am God's son, I am God's daughter. It's a public profession declaration of our faith. All right, enough of my talk. I'd like to now invite um, Luke and then Pumi to share their testimony. And, and I just want to let you know just beforehand, um, I have, I've asked them to share this testimony. I have not bribed them or forced them in any way. Um, I have not said that if you do this, I'll give you $50. Um, and I have not um, 
force them in. Any, this is actually their own, through their own volition. And I'm sure that the parents will testify to that. It is the, of their own decision. And this is what makes it really special. All right. So I'd like to get Luke to come up and share his testimony. I finally get okay. If you had told me four years ago that I would be getting baptized, I would have called you crazy. If you had said I'd be spending 10 minutes every night praying, I would have said you are out of your mind. And if you had said that I'd be sacrificing footy to come to church, I would laugh at you and say you must be joking. And also I used to think that church was a punishment that my parents dished out. But here we are. I've always been a Christian, but until a few months ago, I never fully believed. I would listen when I went to kids' church, enough so I could answer questions, but never commit it to memory. That was, unless I would get a prize for memorizing it. I would always obey the laws and do as I was told, but God would never enter my mind unless people talked about him. That was until last year. Last year, I started to feel God's presence more in my life. I started to listen and pay more attention to what was happening around me. When Joe would ask questions on the Zoom call, I would always raise my hand to give the answer. I would go out of my way to do whatever Joe asked me to do during the youth service. But I still didn't fully believe. And then we had the first youth and young, young adults thing at church. And after we had sung, Joe asked if anyone had thought about being baptized. I subtly raised my hand because I had, but not the same way I do now. I had raised my hand because I thought it would make my parents proud of me and I'd become the favorite child and one up my siblings. <laughs> then as the service was closing, Joe said we would have silent prayer for 10 minutes. I sighed and wondered how I was going to get through it. I went to the end of the row I was sitting in and prayed for the first time I ever truly reached out to speak to God. After what felt like two minutes, Emily sat next to me and asked what I was praying about. As I opened my eyes, tears started to roll out and my throat felt full. I mentioned what I was praying about and as I was doing so, I noticed that there was only one other person still praying and that person is next to me today or down there. So Bumi was the only other person praying then. Emily told me how it had already been 15 minutes and I could go up the back now to play games. And I was surprised because I was only halfway through what I was planning on praying. She also asked me to pray about baptism and after she left, that's what I did. After that, Joe came and talked to me. He said similar things to Emily and also asked me to pray about baptism. But before he left, he decided to pray with me. And after that, I couldn't hold my tears back. Then two days later, I was watching the footy up in Hamilton Island, and I heard God speak to me through the commentary of the footy. Last year, the crows went through a baptism of fire. The previous nights, I had been praying about baptism, and when I heard that, I was certain that God was telling me, yes, it is time. I also went swimming a lot while I was there, which every time I stepped into the water it reminded me one day I would be getting baptized. So th and then the next ch church service we went to, I told everyone, and I, can't, and I can still see the smile on Emily's face when she figured it out, when she was told. It was the happiest I've ever seen her. And to me, that was God telling me I had made the right choice. That is one of the many reasons I have decided to get baptized. It's not the same reasons as it was three to four months ago. And it's now because I have all the proof I need to say that God is real. He is my everything, my friend, my father, and my God. I am up here today to declare my faith in God, and I pray that one day you will too. Thank you. I live in a Christian household. I've known Jesus ever since I've been able to understand words. In church, they always told me that Jesus was my savior, my hope, and my salvation. They asked us, do you love Jesus? And all the kids would shout, yes, I did too. 
of course. But when I actually started to think about this sort of stuff, I stopped saying yes. Do I really love Jesus? Do I really believe that he is my hope, my savior, and my salvation? But soon enough, I told myself I shouldn't think about it, and I stopped wondering about it. When I was seven, I actively went to dawn services. At these services, I actually listened, which is pretty weird for a seven-year-old. When it was time to pray, I prayed for about two to five minutes. One day, I was praying. As per usual, I cried. It wasn't a full ball out cry. It was just some little tears that you could see. And that was the first time I ever cried while praying. When I turned 10, we left my old church. And as I traveled from church to church every Sunday, I grew awkward. When they told me it was time to pray, I didn't know what to pray. And when they told me to read the Bible, I was like, why? I started to not like coming to church. I thought all I'm going to be doing today is being awkward and mingling around on my own again. I was okay with it at first, but after some time, I started to dislike the feeling. The feeling I didn't belong anywhere. It was a really close call on the destruction of the thin line of relationship with Jesus and I. After about a year of searching, we came to Oakley Baptist Church. We initially came here to meet Minha Pastor, but my mom enjoyed her time here so much that we made a decision to stay here. And thus, my journey began. I loved it here. I was by myself, but I didn't really feel left out. It was a good time every day when I came here, so I started to enjoy coming to church more, more, and more. As I moved on to the youth group, I realized something. It's time to, ta take, it's time to start taking this seriously. I realized I've been driven by my own thoughts and judgments that I'd left Jesus out. It made me realize so much more about Jesus I hadn't known about. Instead of just old tales and stories about Jesus and his disciples, they made me realize something way bigger. It was that nothing would happen if I just saying that I believed in Jesus. I had to act like it. Youth group had taught me so much more than my old church could ever have. As I started to attend the Friday youth group meetings, I had become more connected than ever. As a child, not exactly teenager age, I don't know much of my life. I haven't exactly had the most experiences here, and I'm only at the start point of my life journey. But I've decided from this point on, I'll be able to confidently say yes when they ask us, do you love Jesus? Do you really believe in Jesus as my savior, my salvation, my hope? You have just um, heard the testimony, the story of Pomi and Luke. Um, I'd just like to come and invite them up because I'd like to do something before we go in the water. Come on, guys. Yeah. As all good young people should do, I'm going to take a selfie. All right, here we go. So here we go. Ready? ago when we were meeting um, about today and I said, do you have any questions? And what Bumi said was, um, is the bath water going to be cold? <laughs> That's the first one she asked. But rest assured, it's very warm in here. All right, how, here we go. Um, Luke, would you like to come down? And I'd like to invite all the young ones to come to the stage. Here we go, guys. That's it. Hello, hello. Yep. That's it. Stay down low. Sit on your bottoms. Yeah. Sit on your bottoms, please, guys. Thank you. That's it. Right, come in. Oh, yes, it is. Luke, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus came on earth, and died for your sins? I do. By your profession, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
for me. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus came to die for your sins? Yes. All right. By the power, by the um, profession of your faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Excuse the tears in my eyes. Um, <laughs> we are now going to come and collect the offering. Um, so if uh, the stewards are all ready to go, wonderful. Um, perfect. So we'll spend a little bit of time doing that. Um, feel free to just say hi to your neighbour. Um, uh, yeah, tell them a little bit about what's going on. Brad, is it, is it this one? Because I've got a different one every order of size. I've got Joshua 4, 1 to 7. This is, yeah, that's is this the right one? That is the right one. I just didn't change the heading. Ah, okay, then we've got, a diff we've got a different thing on the computer then. Joshua 4, 1 to 7 is what you should have. Is what I should have? Yeah. So I'll read off that? Or cause that should be that. That says 3, 1 to 8. Yeah, ignore that. Ignore that? Yeah. The title is Because I didn't change the title. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> just to confuse you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. yeah. I'm only slightly taller than you guys. Okay, um, today's Bible reading is Joshua 4, um, verse 1 to 7. When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe. And tell them to take up twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, from what, right where the priests are standing, and carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the twelve men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of tribes of the Israelites to serve as a sign among you in the future when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever.
온 백성이 모두 요단강을 건넜을 때 주님께서 여호수아에게 말씀하셨다. 너는 백성 가운데서 각 지파마다 한 사람씩 열두 사람을 뽑아서 세워라. 그리고 그들에게 제사장들의 발이 굳게 선 그곳 요단강 가운데서 돌 열두 개 열두 개를 가져다가 오늘 밤 그들이 머무는 곳에 두라고 하여라. 여호수아는 이스라엘 자손 가운데서 각 지파마다 한 사람씩 세운 그 열두 사람을 불러서 그들에게 말하였다. 주 당신들은 하나님의 언약궤 앞을 지나 요단강 가운데까지 들어가서 이스라엘 자손의 지파 수대로 돌 하나씩을 각자의 어깨에 메고 오십시오. 이것이 당신들에게 기념물이 될 것입니다. 훗날 당신들 자손이 그 돌들이 지닌 뜻이 무엇인지를 물을 때 주님의 언약궤 앞에서 요단강 물이 끊기었다는 것과 언약궤가 요단강을 지날 때 요단강 물이 끊기었으므로 그 돌들이 이스라엘 자손에게 영원토록 기념물이 된다는 것을 그들에게 말해 주십시오. 아멘. 그렇습니다. Last Sunday, Larry was with us, and he was walking home just six or seven hundred meters up the road, and he was knocked by a car, completely an accident, um, as he crossed Warrigal Road. He um, he spoke to me on Sunday night. Everything seemed well. He had a broken ankle and a bump on the head, but the bump on the head was a sign of something deeper going on, and he soon had a stroke. Quite, turned out to be quite a large stroke. He did regain consciousness during the week. I saw him on Friday and then again last night. Um, he said goodbye to his wife and his family. I passed on the greetings and the prayers of our church family. And sometime not long after that, he went to be with the Lord. So for Luke and Bumi, who will be out here in a minute, that's why it's so important what you do. It's so important about the story that we tell. Because in moments like these, we do not grieve. We do grieve, but we do not grieve like those who have no hope. Larry is in a wonderful place right now. He's with the Lord. His wife, who is also a believer, knows that and looks forward to the day when they'll be reunited but she needs our prayers right now as do the rest of the family so i don't know any more than that i literally only found out when i um sorry i sent a message to kate his wife this morning and just said look we, i don't know whether larry would have made it through the night but if he did he had a little ipad that's how his family were communicating even from as far away as brisbane And I said I could send the link and I know he'd love to be with us with the baptism and she sent a message back to say he didn't make it. But thank you for your prayers and for your support. So that's as much as I know at the moment. There'll be details about a service and everything else that comes as a part of that. So please continue to pray for them. I don't know how much of the rest of what I have to say you're going to remember after that story, but while you shed a tear for our friend, remember it with great joy. He's not suffering anymore. He was very conscious. He, he knew what was going on. I'll tell stories another time about that one. But he is where he longed to be. And we're grateful for that. Let me add my welcome again to everybody, especially those 
that uh, are watching online, we're sorry that we, we worked extra hard today to try and get the internet up and running on time, but it's a fickle thing and uh, it chose not to work again today, so the service will be up as soon as we possibly can after we've finished celebrating and worshipping here today. But thank you for, for being with us. But thank you again and a, a special welcome to those that are visiting. Whether you've come because you know either Boonie or, um, or Luke or whether you've come just because you've wandered into our church or because your ch- church at the moment is not accessible because of what we're going through. We just cherish the fact that you've spent this time with us. After the service, please don't rush away. We've been saying for a while... It's really important and one of the things that we missed through lockdown is the fellowship and the association and the encouragement we, can't, we get from being together with one another. So we'll have a cup of tea or coffee so that we can remove masks and we can talk to one another. There is a special morning tea that has been provided for the occasion of today. So please, I hope you're able to stay around. I'm um, reminding people of the biblical soul care program that's coming up in a couple of weeks. If you've been with us, you know I've been hammering this one. I I believe it's so important for us. It's about understanding the Word of God and applying it to our lives. There is a a famine of the Word of God in our world right now. There's a famine in the Word of of the Word of God even in our churches right now. There is no need for that to happen, and we don't want that to happen. And if you want to learn about how to apply God's Word to bring change in your life, and then to be able to help others. This is a fantastic program. It'll cost you nothing. You can make a donation if you want to, but um, it's, it's completely free. If, um, if, I uh, just would love you to come along and to be a part of that. And also we're continuing just to notify people that we will have our church AGM on Sunday the 1st of August. So um, it, please pay, you know, pay attention, have some uh, understanding about what's happening about that one. Well, it's a family service, so we're all together. So I, I'm not going to get boys and girls to go this way and that. On the first Sunday of the month, we all stay together. And we've been talking about this, um, this amazing story out of Joshua. But as we prepare to study that together and to look a little bit into that, let's commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Our God, we thank you for your word to us. At times like this, when we witness the baptism, it it tells us all about what that baptism means and we're going to spend a bit of time thinking about that and talking about that today. At times like this, when we've lost a loved one, it, it reminds us of what is to come and why it is that we have such great hope and expectation that a day is coming. We suspect that day is really soon when we will not only see our friend Larry again, but we will see you face to face and we will forever be in your presence. And so we look forward to that. But in the meantime, we remember that this, your word, is there to give instruction, not just to tell us what we've done in baptism, not just to tell us what to look forward to, but to tell us how to live. And so today, as we open it, we come humbly before you and invite you to instruct us and to teach us. For we want to follow you faithfully. We want to follow on the path that you have laid out before us. And your word says that it is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And so we need your word. And we need to listen. We need to learn. We need to understand and we need to apply it. We need to obey. So help us as we do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Our family do a lot of driving around the country, especially when we go on holidays. There is something that you notice as you drive along, particularly along the country roads. You don't see them so much around the city. But from time to time, if you're driving on a country road, I wonder if you've ever come along a sign. It's generally kind of a dark browny kind of colour and it points out that there is a historical marker along the way. Has anybody seen those signs? Uh, Lots of nods, so you've obviously seen something. I wonder if you ever stopped to take a look. Have you ever pulled over at that historical marker, got out of the car and gone up 
and had a look. We've got one up here on the screen. This historical marker is on the side of the road on the Western Highway in a town, Western Victoria, called Stall. Stall is a town just near the Grampians. It's where our family lived before we came here to Oakley. When you stop and take a look at the, the monument or the historical marker that is there, it tells you something about the history of the region or this particular location. Often it's something that you may not know because you haven't been to that region before. What that marker reminds us of might be interesting. It might be important. It might be a little bit important. It might be moderately important. Sometimes it might be even really quite significant and you might be pleased that you stopped and took the time. It's important sometimes to stop and ask the question, what does this mean? Imagine if you came into this church building this morning or you were watching online for the very first time. You've never been in a church, maybe except for a a wedding or a funeral. And you come in and you see this baptism taking place. You hear the testimony that Luke gave and when we gave. And you might be thinking and and be feeling quite puzzled. Well, what does this mean? You might think, my goodness, that poor Marlowe family. They're so large, they're so big, they run out of hot water in the morning. So one of them has to take lots in coming and having a bath at church. But if you stopped and asked somebody, what does this mean? Which is why it was so important for Joe to teach us and to share with us and remind us what baptism means you learn something that I believe is not just a little bit important but something that is vitally important particularly because there is a day for every one of us when we will finish this life this earthly this mortal life will come to a conclusion and we will be faced with the question what next If we have committed our hearts and our lives to Jesus and put our faith and trust in him, we know what is next. That that, uh, that future is certain and it is positive. Baptism is a marker. Baptism points to something. It reminds us about something. Baptism itself is not the important thing, although I want to be clear to say it's really important, guys, that you are baptized because baptism is in obedience to the command of Jesus. If we say we love Jesus and we say we follow him and we say he is our Lord and he is our Savior, but say, I don't need to be baptized, well, is he really our Lord? Is he really our Savior? We are baptized not to save us. That takes place when we put our faith in him. We're baptized in obedience and we're baptized because of what, of the story, the illustration, the picture that baptism tells. It reminds us of the gospel. It's what baptism points to that is important. It tells us of the story of Jesus. It tells us of his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Luke and Bomi have told us today that they have chosen to put their faith and their trust in him for their salvation. And because they have done that, it is saying that they have died to their old life. It is now dead. It is gone. Like when they went down into the water. And they have been raised to their new life in Jesus Christ, an eternal life. So that if, like Larry, one day they pass away, they will be forever in the presence of Jesus. And that's not just a spirit presence. Ultimately, the Bible makes it very clear that on that last day when the trumpet sounds... The dead in Christ will rise first. Those who are alive will be transformed immediately. Corruption will put on incorruptible. Mortal will put on immortality. Death will be swallowed up in victory. There will be a physical bodily resurrection 
when we are with our Lord. Those who have died, those who are alive and gathered together will be raised incorruptible never to see death. Baptism tells the story about our sin being washed away. That our sins are forgiven. That we are forever free from the punishment of the sins that we have committed, both past and present and even in the future, because the Bible tells us that if we have put our faith in Jesus Christ, he has taken the punishment that would have been ours. And so we are set free from that punishment. We don't have to face it because it has already been paid for. Well, we've been looking at this story of Joshua that was read to us today. And in the story of Joshua, it's the story when he led the Israelites into the promised land. Remember, right back at the beginning, the Israelites were slaves in Egypt. They'd been slaves there for 400 years. Prior to their slavery, God had come to Abraham, who was a faithful man who loved God and followed him. He wasn't perfect. We hear and read about his faults as well, but he worshipped God and he sought to follow God. And God had promised Abraham and he promised his son Isaac and he promised his grandson Jacob that their descendants were going to inherit this land, a land that today is known as Israel. In fact, it's a land that is much greater than the area that today is known as Israel. In fact, the area that is promised in the Bible, the nation of Israel has never had that whole land before that is still yet future, a time when Christ will reign on the throne according to what the scriptures say. But for 400 years, they are there and they are in Egypt and they are slaves. Then comes the time when God will lead them out of slavery in Egypt. And so he sends them a deliverer. He sends Moses to lead them out of slavery through the Red Sea to Mount Sinai and then across the wilderness to enter the promised land. But most of the people, when they arrived at that promised land, they didn't believe that God was going to defeat the enemies. They didn't believe that God was going to allow them to settle there. They were fearful. They were afraid of the people in the land. They thought that God wasn't big enough, that God wasn't trustworthy. And they complained. They complained to Moses. They complained to one another. They complained to God. And so God turned them around. And he sent them back out into the wilderness. And they were out there for another 40 years until most of the people had died. And now a new generation has risen up. And this generation is under the leadership of Joshua. And this generation is ready. They're sick of wandering around the wilderness. They're going to go into this land and they're going to put their trust in God. And the first thing we noticed when we looked at the story of Joshua is that they arrived there at the promised land and they saw the first thing across the Jordan River that they were going to have to deal with was this mighty city of Jericho with great big walls around the outside. And so a Joshua called together and appointed two spies to go in and to spy out the land and go into the city. We found out in that story, I'm not telling the whole story again, but the thing we found out was that God was preparing the way before them. They weren't doing the work, God was doing the work. And when they listened to the story and they listened to the words of the people in that city, they realised that the fear of God was in them and the victory would be theirs. And so they came back and encouraged the people and they were ready and they prepared themselves to cross the Jordan River And to battle Jericho. We haven't got to that story yet. That'll be the next story we come to. But first, last time we we looked at that crossing the Jordan River. But it wasn't as simple as finding a bridge. There was no bridge. And it wasn't as easy as finding a nice shallow place to, to have a ford across the river. You know what a ford is? It's not a car. Well, it is a car. But a ford across a river is a shallow area where you can take and walk across. And take your horses and carts and whatever it is that you've got. You don't have to swim, but you can cross. There was no such thing. Why? Because the Jordan River was in flood at the time. It was a mighty, raging torrent. 
But God miraculously stopped the waters and all the Israelites crossed on dry land while the priests stood in the middle of the river holding the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders. The Bible says all the people walked across the river on dry land, just like all the Israelites walked through the Red Sea on dry land under the leadership of Moses. You see, God was telling Joshua and all the people a really important thing, and I want to tell you he's telling us something just as important. Follow me carefully. God was saying to them, just as I was faithful, just as I was powerful, just as I led your forefathers out of Egypt and through the Red Sea, so too I am faithful and I am powerful for you, Joshua, and for you, this next generation of Israelites. I am still with you just like I was with your forefathers. And what's really interesting is if we turn our Bible to to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the Holy Spirit tells us there that God is saying that what the Israelites went through when they went through the Red Sea and what they went through when they went through the Jordan River is what Luke and Bumi went through when they went through the waters of baptism. It was a baptism of the nation of Israel. The whole nation was being consecrated. What does consecrated mean? It means they were purified and they were dedicated to God's service. They were purified and they were dedicated to God's service. And that's what you two have done today. It's a picture of you being purified and dedicated to God's service. And that's so important and it's really really powerful. You belong to God. You belong to God. He wants and he will continue to train you. He will continue to to build into you. He will stir those gifts up that he has placed in your life and we're going to pray about in just a little while because he has good work that he's prepared for you. And I want to encourage you in that. For all of us, many of us have been baptized as well. And a day like today is a reminder to us that we have also been consecrated. We've been purified and we've been dedicated to God. And he has put us to work to help build his kingdom, to help build his family to reach out to others, to those who are perishing, to those who are lost, to share the gospel with them, the good news, to love them like Jesus loved, to do good works, to perform miracles even, to testify that God is real, that he is alive and he is still working, to pray for them, to raise them up and to point them to Jesus. A baptism service is a time to celebrate and it is a time to remember. And that's what's happening for Joshua and for Israel and and for the Israelites in today's story. God tells Joshua, he says, choose 12 men, one from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. And I want you to send them out into the middle of the dry river where where the men, the priests are still standing with the Ark of the Covenant on their back. And I want you to take a big stone out of the middle of that river and I want you to carry it out onto the side, onto the dry ground, a place where the river won't continue to flow. And they brought the stones out and what did they do? They constructed a monument, a historical marker, if you like. And that marker was there to remind them. Joshua said, whenever your children ask you, what do these stones mean? You can remind them of this day and how the Lord stopped the waters of the Jordan and how we crossed over on dry land. He tells them, these stones remind us what the Lord did for us. What the Lord did for us is exactly what the Lord did for Moses when he parted the waters of the Red Sea. And I don't know about you, But when I read that, that says something really important, something really special, something very encouraging to me, something very encouraging to all of us. You see, in the Bible, there are many stories of people that came to faith in Jesus. 
And in putting their faith in Jesus, they were baptized as a sign that they had come into the Christian family and to testify to what Jesus had done on the cross. They believed that Jesus was their saviour. They obeyed because they wanted to please God and they did this by being baptized. That was their first step, the first thing they did after putting their faith in Jesus. And God was with them. And God gave them wonderful promises and fantastic things happened for them, even though they suffered trials and difficulties. And they were consecrated, they were set apart for God, they were dedicated to him through baptism. It happens in the stories in the New Testament, it happens in the story over the last 2,000 years of the Christian church. Men and women who put their faith in Jesus and God was faithful to them. And just as Joshua's story pointed to God's faithfulness, even though God had been faithful, you know, years, 40 years earlier when they crossed the, the, the Red Sea, so too the baptism that we have witnessed today reminds us that God's faithfulness is as true for us today as when Jesus and his disciples and Paul and John were baptizing people 2,000 years ago. God is faithful to you in the same way that he was faithful back then. So we can rely on God's faithfulness. What was true for them is absolutely true for us. God will do great things through us just like he has done through the believers in the past and all through the last 2,000 years. I'm absolutely confident of this. And the reason that I am confident of this is because of what Joshua says in verse 24. Follow this with me. This is what he says. God did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. Pay attention to this verse. It's really important. There are two things that I want to point out from this verse. God is going to do mighty things. We might even call those things miracles. I reckon there are people in this room right now, myself included, that is asking God for a miracle. The kind of things that humans can't do, not in their own strength. But Joshua tells us in this, in this verse two reasons why God is going to continue to do these mighty things even today. The first reason is this so that everyone around us will know that God is real. That he is powerful. That he is to be honoured and worshipped and feared. Some people, maybe even you, might be sitting there and asking, well, why would God want to do something amazing for me? I'm not very significant and I'm not really that worthy. But that's the wrong reason to be thinking about. Because that's focusing on yourself. Now I know when life is tough and I know when we are at rock bottom and we're asking for a miracle, that's what we're thinking about. We're asking for ourselves. But I want to encourage you even in that moment to do something different instead. Don't look in. Look up. And then look around. Look up and then look around. Why? God wants to do mighty works in you, in you, because he cares about them. He cares about those around us. And when he works mightily in you, like in Bommy, like in Luke, like in anyone who is consecrated to him, then he is visible to other people. Then they will know that he is mighty. Then they will know that he is God. The second reason in this verse that God will still work miracles in the lives of people today is so that we will always fear the Lord our God. Now I need to talk a little bit about that word fear. If you have never put your faith in Jesus... If he hasn't saved you from your sin, then the word here means pretty much what you think it means. God 
will judge sin. He has to. God is patient. God doesn't want anybody to come under judgment of sin. The Bible makes that abundantly clear. God wants everybody and has made a way for everybody to receive forgiveness through Jesus. But people willfully and deliberately choose not to. And eventually, time will run out. Just like the world's time will run out. And God will bring his judgment just as he has promised. Like I said before, it's not God's will that any should perish. He has made a way that we can be purified, that we can have our sin forgiven. Because he put our judgments, our punishments, on his only begotten son, Jesus. Jesus paid the price for every sin ever committed, past, present and future. Not just yours, but every sin committed on the earth. What the problem is, is that people don't allow their sin to be paid for by Jesus. We can be free, the way is there, but we need to choose Jesus as our saviour. The only way, there's two ways that our punishment can be paid. One is we allow Jesus to pay it for us, the other one is we take it on ourselves. There is no other way. If we have given our life to Jesus, like these two beautiful people have demonstrated today, then we still fear God, but we fear him in a different way. That fear is quite different. God is just, he's just as powerful. But on this occasion, God uses his power to protect us, to guide us, to strengthen us, to bless us. So the fear here is not, I'm so afraid, but it is a fear that speaks of honour. It speaks of worship. It speaks of awe. It speaks of magnifying and lifting up the name of Jesus that is a name above all other names. Can you see the difference? So as we finish our time today, and we take a moment in a few moments just to pray for these beautiful people and, and then to share around the Lord's table together. But I want to point out and just remind you of two things. If you're here today and, or you're online and you've been baptized like Mumi and like Luke have been today, then I want you to remember that you have been consecrated. That means you've been purified. Remember the Christian bar of soap. It's out of 1 John 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we slip up, we come back to God, we get on our knees and say, God, I, I have sinned, forgive me. And he will, that's his promise. If we're earnest, remember you've been consecrated, you've been purified, and you have been dedicated. You have been set apart to God. You belong to him. Remember all the wonderful things that he has planned for you to do. Remember, it's not about how good you are and how strong you are and how capable you are. The Bible says it's in our weakness his strength is displayed. And so the weaker you are, the better it is as far as God is concerned because the clearer it becomes, it's God that is doing the work. God has good things for you to be doing. Are you doing that? If you're here and you believe in Jesus but you've never been baptized, well, it's time to. Can I encourage you to talk to men? come and talk to me let's make a time to do that as soon as possible let's not wait any longer but finally and importantly if you do not know Jesus as your savior then can I lovingly but as firmly as I possibly can encourage you to do that now to do that today God loves you he loves you so much, the Bible says that he gave his only son, Jesus. That whoever believes in him, the Bible says, shall not perish, shall not come under eternal judgment of God, but shall have everlasting life. 
If you want to find salvation in Jesus and become a part of his family, to be consecrated, to be purified and set apart for him, I want to tell you, and we've been saying this for months now, it's as easy as ABC. It's as easy as, you could almost say it with me, I'm sure. This is what anyone can do to receive forgiveness, to be welcoming to God's family and to receive eternal life. A stands for admit that you have sinned and fallen short of God's standard before a holy God. I want to read a few scriptures that describe that. It says, no one is righteous, not even one. Romans 3 and verse 10. A little later in that chapter, for everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. But then in chapter 6, the wages or the penalty of sin is death. But, I love that word but, comes just in time. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So that's A, admit that you have sinned. We haven't finished yet. B stands for believe that Jesus is God and that he died on the cross for your sins. That is made true um, all throughout the Bible, but in particular 1 Corinthians 15 says, Christ died for our sins just as the scripture said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day. So that's A, Admit that you've sinned. B, believe that Jesus is God and died on the cross for your sin. But there's one final step that we all must take. And that is to personally call on Jesus to save you. Confess that he is your Lord and Savior. Just ask him. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I know you died for my sin. I accept your gift of salvation. Would you save me? Would you come and live in my life? Listen to the beautiful words of Acts chapter 2, verse 21. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And in Romans 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, does it say you might be saved? It says you will be saved. Anyone can do this. Everyone is invited to do this. God is not willing that any should perish, but there is no other way that we can be saved. If you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, you can do that right now. Admit that you have sinned. Believe that Jesus died to forgive your sin. Call on Jesus to be your Savior and Lord. Then come and talk to me. Come and talk to me. Let's set a time for you to be baptized as a testimony to everybody else. Invite your family and friends. Invite anybody that you can. Let's testify to the goodness and the salvation that can only be found in Jesus Christ before this world is done. Let's pray. Now God, your word is true. It's proven again and again and again. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for the instruction that we get. We thank you for the, 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 the truth that it tells us of all the wonderful promises that you have for those who have found faith in you. Right now I want to pray for any within the sound of my voice, whether here in the room or online, whether watching today or at another time. Lord, that if you are speaking to them because they've never put their faith in you personally for salvation, that they would choose to do that right now. That they would recognize what the Bible says is true. That they are a sinner just like me and the rest of us here that Jesus is God and that he died on that cross to take the penalty for our sin, that if we put our faith and trust in him, if we call out and confess him as our Lord and Saviour, we will be saved according to the truth of your word. I pray for us as believers, whether somebody that's just come into the kingdom of God through choosing to do that right in this moment or those that have been walking with God for many years now, I pray that we would stand upon the truth that we have been consecrated, purified and set set apart to your service. We're not slaves being beaten and whipped towards a task. We are children who love the Father and love to give him glory, to serve him and to honour him with our lives. And so, as Romans says, we present ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. 
In a moment, we're going to pray for Luke and for Bomi. But I want to pray for all of us as well, believers in Jesus Christ, that we would be reminded every day that we're consecrated, But we're not left to do it alone in any way. You have gifted us, you've filled us with your Holy Spirit and equipped us to do everything that gives you pleasure. And so help us to choose to do that, committing ourselves to you moment by moment, day by day, until we see you face to face. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to hand over to Joe. He's going to lead us in a time of prayer. He's going to invite a few people to come up and and, and gather around. So let's find, let's find the man a microphone. This one. How about this? Here we go. Yep, that's on. To come together as one as a church family to bless um, Luke and Pumi. Because this is the start of their Christian journey. And we, as a church, are here to affirm um, their testimony and to also encourage and also lead them in the the right way. So as a church, I'd like to invite everyone to just stand. And I'd like um, the leaders to come out. Uh, Pastor Min, I'd like to ask um, David and Christine as well, Emily, Johnsy, and also Pomi's parents to come out, please. Yes, thank you. You guys live in the same house, so it'd be really appropriate for you to be the people to lay hands on him. Yes. And likewise on Pomi. That would be great. And as we pray, I'd like to um, extend our hands out to like Pomi and Luke. And I'll I'll lead this um, pray I'll lead the prayers. And after I started st- uh, stop praying, if anyone wants to pray for them. Um, please, just, pray just with them. stick your hand up, and I'll That's give it. you a microphone. That's it. And then Brad will finish off um, the close the prayer for sure. us. Heavenly Father, we we thank you for Luke, and we thank you for Bomi. We thank you for their powerful testimony today, Lord. We thank you for their story and their courage to to share that publicly with us in your church today. Lord, we thank you for their story that, you know, a long, time ago, uh, uh, a long time ago, they didn't really know you and they just came to church because their parents came to church. But now that they've come, they really do believe that you are their saviour, that you are their Lord, and that you have died for their sins and they rely on you and they put their lives in your hands. We, Lord, we thank you for those powerful testimonies, Lord. We thank you for their life. We thank you for um, the way that they've um, come, to, come in courage to profess their faith in front of everyone, to you and to the rest of the church family, Lord. Lord, I pray that you'd continue to lay your blessings upon Bumi and Luke as they continue to live their lives in your hands, Lord Jesus. Lord, we proclaim that they are not in this journey alone. Lord, as a church family, we are here to pray with them, to encourage them, to discipline them, to, to love them in their journey, in their, in their journey of faith in you, Lord. Lord, help us to love them as a family does. Help us pour out our, pour out our love to them and to continue to encourage them in faith. Lord, we thank you for them. And I, we would just pray that you would continue to bring out the gifts that you have in them, Lord. Continue to use them in the way that you have p- planned, the perfect plan that you have for them. Lord, we remember the words in Proverbs where it says, Trust in the Lord with all of your understanding. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lord, I pray that Bumi and Luke will trust in you with all of their heart. Yes, Lord. And we also remember that we do not lean, lean not on your understanding. Lord, help Bumi and Luke lean not on their own understanding. And also it says, submit to God in all of your ways. Yes, Lord. Help Bumi and Luke to submit their ways to you. And you promise that you will make their path straight. 
that you will direct and lead them. Lord, I just pray these blessings upon Paul, me and Luke, that you would continue to guide and open the doors for them. If anyone else would like to pray, just please. If no one wants to pray, I'm just going to close. But I want to bring a word from, I've just felt God wanted me to say this to you and I'm going to try and do this without my glasses on. So, you know, I might be holding this a long way away. But for both of this is just this is just for both of you. And it comes out of Jeremiah chapter 1. And I believe that God wants to say this to both of you because, I, you know, I've heard your testimony and I've heard the, the real impact that you're having on people around you. And sometimes... Um, sometimes we feel like we're weak, we're small, we're young, nobody will listen to us. But this is what God says, do not say that I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Lord God, I pray for these beautiful young people. I thank you that your light shines so brightly in their lives. Thank you for their beautiful words of testimony of their faith. And it shone very clearly to us of the personal nature of that that faith. They, like so many of us, have wrestled and have come to that place to love you freely and give ourselves to you. And so I thank you for that and for their beautiful words to us. And I pray as has been prayed before, that you would fill them to the fullness of your spirit, that their light and their life would shine in this dark world. Now, I know that's going to bring opposition and it's going to bring persecution. So I pray that you would give them courage and strength, that you would protect them from the evil one, that they would put on the armor of God every day, knowing that they go into battle. But it's not a battle with guns or swords or rifle, you know, anything like that. But it's a spiritual battle against the forces of darkness and what's at stake is the salvation of the lost. And so just as they face opposition, they will draw around them people who recognize something in them Know that they can trust them because they reflect a trustworthy Heavenly Father. And that you would be able to speak words of life through them that will bring eternal life to others. I believe, I believe that you want to see others saved through their testimony. And so empower them and encourage them in that. Lord, for us as a church, not just as pastors, not just their youth leaders, but all of us as we stand here, as their friends and family. Maybe we belong to other churches, but we're here because we love these people. We are committed to pray for them, to have their back, just as they have our back. That we are one family, one in Christ Jesus. That we have a mission in this world to continue the mission that you began. And that we have the promises of your word that the gates of hell shall not prevail against your church. And so we thank you and we place them and we place ourselves and the responsibility and the privilege that comes from all of that firmly in your hands. I pray that in Bonnie's life, in Luke's life, Lord Jesus, that you be glorified. For we pray in your precious name. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Thank you.
Just remember, Jesus said, freely you have been given, so freely give, right? Okay. (laughs) God bless you. Well done. How special is that? Look, I know we've been here for a while, but we do want to just participate very, very quickly around the Lord's table. It's an important thing that we do together. And uh, we started a bit late, but we're finishing even later. So thank you for your patience. Let me remind you that just as baptism is a memorial, reminding us of our consecration, communion is a memorial as well. And every time we take the bread and the cup, Um, We are celebrating what Jesus has done for us. We're remembering the very foundation of our faith. This is the rock that we stand on. Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins. We talked about that. If we've put our faith in him, our sins have been forgiven. In fact, the Bible goes so far as to, to describe this for us. If you read Psalm 103... It says this, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions, our sins from us. I want to ask you a question. Can you go to the North Pole? You can. You keep going north, you'll get to the North Pole. Can you go to the South Pole? Yep, all right. What if I go east? Can I get to the East Pole? Actually, east is that way, isn't it? I told you I'm confused today. If I go east, can I get to the east pole? No. no. Can I, if I go west, can I get to the west pole? It's a good description of how far God puts our sins away from us. They are so far, they are beyond reach. And we should remember that. Today, remember that you are consecrated. You're set apart to God. Remember that you are forgiven. All your sins have been paid for. Remember that you are loved as a part of God's family. Remember God's promise and worship him at his table. What we're going to do, are we all set up the way we normally do? Every month it changes. I just can't keep up. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to jump on the piano and play some quiet music for a moment. Um, I'm going to invite you just to file around very carefully. You'll see there's a hand sanitizer on a stand there. Don't rush. We'll take time to do this properly. Um, then you'll go to the window, you'll be served bread and cup, come back and sit down and then we will take together. So if you just quickly and carefully start making your way now, that would be fantastic.
Looks like everybody's been served. Are we all ready? Fantastic. Let's just remember the words from the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. The Apostle Paul received the teaching about what we are doing and he's passed it on to us. And I learnt it when I was younger and I'm passing it on to you and you probably learnt it in different places. But we keep telling the story because it is the most amazing story of all time, most amazing story ever told. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. And he broke it in pieces and he said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. If you're a believer in Jesus, I invite you to take the bread. There's a story around the bread. I don't have time to tell you about it now, but it's worth looking up and finding out about. But I invite you, as you worship, declare your love for him. Let us eat together. In the same way, Jesus took the cup of wine after supper and he said, this cup, is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink it, for every time you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Let's drink together. Can I invite you to stand with me? And we will say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I want to invite you to remain standing. We want to close our service by singing a song today. I know it's been such a long service today. In fact, the service is so long, it's highly probable that Jesus is going to come back before it finishes, which wouldn't be a bad thing. We wouldn't be upset about that. But um, we do want to sing a song. But I do want to say this. I'd just like to invite people, if, if anybody is you know, finding things difficult, particularly for those that might have decided to become a believer, to, to follow Jesus for the first time, or someone just wants somebody to pray with them, please just come and see me, come and ask me, or come and see Pastor Min. We would just love to pray with you and to encourage you. Joe, the same, particularly for young people, although Joe doesn't get all the young people. You can come to young me or young men <laughs> as well. Um, we want it, we, I, know that, I know that people are, are doing it tough. We don't want anybody to feel that they're doing it alone. We're here to help one another. So let's, uh, em- Emily's going to lead us in this song in worship. I'm very, we are very, um, the service has left me without words. Let us worship together one last time just for today, for some of us. But let us bring our joyful hearts. Let us bring our laughter. Let us bring our smiles. Let us celebrate, truly celebrate what God has done for us and what we have come to celebrate today. Let us sing together. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Let us all come to Jesus today. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy, come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his 
goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved us, for God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only son to save us, whoever believes in him will live forever. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. off the service from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, which is a command as well as a blessing. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies, but test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen for he who calls you is faithful. Go in peace.